And for me, I'm going to live in the forward movement of who you can become. And when we are confident enough in the forward movement, then we will work on the past. Welcome to the Small Steps Big Wins podcast. I'm dedicated to helping you take control of your life. Together, we'll explore practical tips, expert advice, and inspiring stories to help you overcome obstacles and achieve your goals. Making small changes is possible and can lead to big results. Are you ready? Let's go do this. Hey, Austin, welcome. We're going to talk about coaching. We're going to weave my story in it because you're my coach. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's go do this. So I'm going to let you just introduce yourself and a little bit of your background, and we'll go from there. I had a great mentor tell me one time that I can tell you my resume, but that's only where I've been. It doesn't, that doesn't mean who I am. And my faults, uh, you know, coaching found me. I didn't find coaching. And I remember... Um, as like a three and six and eight year old, like adults used to tell me their problems. Like, like my mom used to tell me this all the time. And so, you know, for me, coaching was a way off thing. And then I had some unexpected life things happen in it. A close friend said, you know, you need coach. And uh, I said, no, I'm not coaching you. And he said, uh, well, I already sent you the money through Venmo. So you need to figure it out. And that's how I got started. And then here we are all these years later. And it's something that will never leave me being able to impact people on a scale like this. Uh, I remember this story like it was yesterday, my first real session. Two minutes in, the guy was talking about getting divorced and there was kids involved. And I go, oh, okay, so this is like a thing. This is very important. People are investing their time and money into me. There's other lives at stake. And so that's why I take what I do so seriously. When I started this process almost 24 weeks ago, I didn't know where I was going to wind up. And I had enough faith and trust in you that I'm trusting the process and allowing each week to unfold in basically surrendering to whatever happens in that week and not, not really wondering where it's going. I mean, like I know where we're going, but it's kind of, it's kind of taken some zigzags and turns along the way. And it's, it's, and it's all been good. It's happened for me, not to me. That was one of the things you told me in the very beginning. I used to look at life as things happening to me and that's a victim mentality. And to change that and realize, wait a minute, all these things are happening for me to develop me into the person that I am today. So that definitely trusting the process. And I think, think you need to trust the coach that you're hiring, that that person has that experience and that they connect. And you also mentioned like the coach chooses the client just as much as the client chooses the coach. I think there's a lot of truth to that because if you're not comfortable with that person that you're working with, you can't be a hundred percent authentic with them. And think, that, think of it this way. Like yeah. I have multiple businesses and I have my personal life and I travel people don't realize how much brain power it takes to handle an individual client, right? I have multiple ones, right? And so if I'm going to be with you for three months, six months, nine months, a year, some I've been with for two years, I really want to spend time with you and I want to see you succeed. So that's what I mean by, you know, we're spending some, you're, you're, you're telling me more secret stuff than some tell their spouses. So I really want to have that symbiotic energy um, but also have the freedom for me to call you out completely uh, on the table if you're not if you're not acting in accordance with your own personal integrity. Yeah, and you've done that too, which is you said before. It's like calling out my own bullshit, <laughs> which I'm thankful for. I really am. But I think Mark it's England, also being Mark, England, Mark England's favorite line. He says is the greatest thing that you can do as a coach is not believe your clients' BS. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And Mark developed the Enlifted program, which is what you went through. Do you want to touch on that real briefly, what that is? And it actually has had an impact on me as well through using that. So talk a little bit about the Enlifted method. Yeah, so Mark was a, a Muay Thai fighter, like at the highest level and broke his shin and, and kind of got lost in his identity for two years. And he realized that the only thing that would bring him back is to reassociate the stories that he was telling himself with proper language, right? And that's story work and language work. And what it's allowed me to do with myself and clients is to really get distance from the story 
in the words that we use. And when you go through this process, you will really allow yourself to recenter yourself around a story. And some of these stories that we've hold on for 30, 40, 60 years, I've seen change people's lives by just an hour session. Uh, I know an hour and a half session I did with him three years ago changed my entire relationship with my father. We had not spoken. And now we talk each, each, every day. So how powerful is that one session to change my entire relationship with my dad, right? I was a 20 year kind of trudge. So that work is really important to me. Yeah. And I saw it play out in my life and you did too, in the very beginning where we took titles to stories as you listened to my story. And I gave you a lot of my background on how I thought these incidences that happened to me when I was, you know, six, seven, 10, 14, 20 years old. And then you read those stories, we put them to title. And then I went and I just wrote them out. And through that process of writing them out, and honestly, to be honest with you, I had no idea where it was going. I was very skeptical. I'm like, why am I writing these stories out? But after you walked me through the process, and I interacted with them, and we used breath work, which is also very important as well, and breathe, breathing through those stories and getting them to the point where they no longer had control over me was transformational. I think that was one of the one of the key catalysts that in us working together that has helped me to to transform you know <laughs> i mean i remember remember the uh, the first conversation we had i said to you austin i know i need to be deconstructed and the name of your podcast is called <laughs> construct your life and i said to you i need to be deconstructed and reconstructed again can yeah. you do that and you said yeah. yes and so I said, okay, I'm going to trust you on this one. And you certainly, certainly delivered. <laughs> I feel very reconstructed. Well, it's, it's interesting, right? Like when, you know, you do things right in the moment and you're, you're riffing back and forth. I remember when we came up with the name for the podcast, like, cause I was going through my own reconstruction myself through alcohol addiction and drug addiction and divorce and the word construction, right? It, it, it just means that you're never finished, right? And I think that if we're always working on ourselves, right, and we're always getting better, then then that's the ticket, right? And I think that we're trying to get to some metaphysical or ridiculous space that doesn't exist. There's no end point. And so if you're in construction, you're always deconstructing and reconstructing. And the great news, that the gift that I can give to everybody out there and, and this is from my own personal experience. If you have trouble in your life or you are at your wits end or you are rock bottom, the answer to your question is you're the only one that has the key. So because you got yourself there, you can get yourself out. So if anybody's sitting there and thinking that you can't, BS, you can. I've seen a million people do it and you can do it too. That's great advice. And that's something that you have brought me through the last couple, like since we started working together, I have also gone through this transformation where I took from leaning on people and believing that they were the source of the inspiration to me to change me to actually realizing that everything that I need is inside of me. I just need to see it and be made aware of it and then press into it. And that's one of the things that me coaching with you has done for me. It moved me from finding my, my strength outside of me to realize that it's, it's actually inside of me. I just have to unlock it, press into it and realize that it's there. So that's one of the, I mean, there's multiple, but that's one of the ways coaching has helped me get out of my own way, really. I want to well, I want to tell people a story just so they can relate to something that's very tangible that they'll understand. And I love to call myself out on my podcast and I love to be an example for everybody. I used to be in a bad mood when it was raining outside and outside. I'm being 100% serious. Like, not a bad mood, but like not a good mood, right? I was, if it was sunny out and it was good, I, whatever. I was in a great mood, okay? And when I met my fiance, she was from Seattle, so she's used to gloomy and rainy. And she taught me something that changed my life. And she said, the rain is beautiful too. And when she said that, I stopped and I thought about that for like 30 minutes. And I go, my entire life, 
I said that gloomy, cl- gloomy clouds and rain is bad. And then I started relating that to my entire life. The storm that you're going through right now, the issues you're dealing with, are setting you, setting you up for the sunny. And for you to be upset with them is the reason that they're not being addressed and they keep coming up. So embrace the rain and the sun. And I just tweeted about it today. The philosophy in my life has changed my life for the better. Is nothing's as bad as it seems and nothing's as good as it seems. It's always somewhere in the middle. And when you realize that, you can really create a peace inside internally that allows you to handle anything in front of you. What I love about that story is that it puts into perspective anything that you walk through when you think about it, you know, and that how you view something through your lens and, you know, to, to continue the, the picture metaphor, what glasses are you putting on? Are you putting on the positive glasses in order to view your circumstance, regardless of what it is, or are you putting on the negative and you go into the, oh, woe is me perspective? So it's just a matter of changing the glasses that you have on and how you view the thing that's going on outside of you, right in front of you, because you can't change the rainy day. The rainy day is there, but you can change how you view it. Stories resonate with people more than just a coach, me or you telling somebody you should be thinking this way. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, like, more importantly, more importantly, who cares what I think? It's your life. And, and it's taken me a long time to understand that for myself and for others, right? It's your life. I'm here to support you and create dreams and create a lighter life so you can push forward. I'm not here to tell you what to do. This isn't military school. Like you probably, and more importantly, you've probably been told what to do your entire life. So don't let me do that either. But you wouldn't know anything Good about advice. it. <laughs> As we joke. <laughs> Well, Austin, I appreciate our time together. I can't wait to share this on on my podcast. I'm going to call Mark and say, Mark, can we put this on my podcast? This is amazing. This is so good. I'm so excited. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Yeah, I love it too. I mean, I love talking about coaching and that's why, actually, that's why I, like, that's why I launched my coaching platform, Personal Coach Mm -hmm. Finder, because you as my coach has radically transformed my life. I am so grateful and I want other people out there to find their perfect coach and go through that transformation as well because I know I'm not the only one out there who knows that they need to have some type of deconstruction and need to be reconstructed again. And the power of a coach in somebody's life is if you allow it and see, I was ready, as you mentioned earlier before, when the client is ready, you know, the coach will appear. It goes with the saying, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. I believe the same thing is true with coaching as well. When you are ready and you know, you need that transformation, finding the right person for that is, is literally life-changing. To, well, you, you know, you I mean, my, you, you, you <laughs> here, I found my first one. I get a yes. phone call from a, I get a phone call from a friend. We're in a mastermind together. It's a good friend. He goes, I just went to uh, Tony Robbins event. I met this guy from Costa Rica. You got to meet him. He, he sent me a text. He said, here's his phone number. Call him. I called him right then. He was living in Costa Rica. We talked for two and a half hours, signed up the next day, started coaching. We coached for two years and he helped me through divorce and alcohol and drug addiction. And I've visited him five times since in Costa Rica. He's changed my entire life. One of my best friends in the entire world. That single-handedly, and think about all the people I employ and all the people I've helped. So think about all the people that him helping me has helped all those people. And I, and I told him, I said, man, you've helped, and all the people that listen to my podcast, I said, you've helped thousands and hundreds of thousands of people through me because you coach me. And he's so humbled by that, but I'm humbled for how great he was to me because I was a wreck. Uh, God bless this man who was super talented to handle me. 
<laughs> I can say the same, like what you just said is pretty much my story in a nutshell as well. It's just still unfolding. We're not two years out from it, but two years from now, I probably will say the same thing because honestly, I mean, let's be honest. When when I met you, I mean, I don't have drug history. I don't have alcoholism. I don't have that type of background, but my history to me through my eyes is just as traumatic. Some of the things I've walked through, some of the things that have happened to me brought me to a place of desperation where I'm like, I, you know, I need somebody to walk with me at this point. And so this story is still unfolding too. And think of how many people are going to be touched through you by helping me in what I'm doing with my podcast and on my coach finding site as well. And so, you know, what we're doing as we affect lives in the things that we do, it, there's never an ending. As long as we continue to press into who we are and every day get 1% better, there's no ending to it. And that's what makes it thrilling. So talk a little bit about your philosophy and your perspective on coaching and the importance that they have when they're coaching their clients. I think, I think it's, I think it's super interesting, right? Because, you know, there's a lot of them have kids involved. A lot of them have big job changes. There's a lot of responsibility when it comes to coaching. And so for me personally, I've always took the, uh, what I call is like the wood chipper method. I, I, I don't do that. I don't, it's not one size fits all. It's, it's a customization of understanding the life that the person has led. Why do they feel this way? And how do we address it one day at a time to get better, right? Because everybody has a different experience. I have a really good friend who's beat cancer twice. And he said, remember that big doors swing on small hinges, right? It's one of my favorite quotes because I didn't have cancer, but I had alcohol addiction. So who am I? He said, your problems are no different than mine. You just went through different stuff. Everybody's been through something whether or not it's anything or not. And what they don't know is subconsciously, it's, it's just fueling uh, bad decisions. It's fueling uh, bad outcomes. It's fueling bad emotional triggers. And we don't even know it, a lot of it, right? And so when you get to know somebody, you can kind of peel back layers of who they are to, to get them headed in the right direction. And then once they're headed in the right direction, it's maintaining. And after it's maintaining, then we're working on uh, layering in your subconscious mind. And, uh, one of my favorite books, I've bought 70 versions for people I just run into in the streets. It's called uh, What You Say When You Talk to Yourself. And he basically talks about how the brain is wired to remember things. To, the brain is the muscle that works the hardest. So if you say something to yourself over and over again, and it's going to wire itself together. So you have to rewire that stuff out, right? And, and that's what we're basically doing is, is just saying the same thing, getting ourselves on a plane of positivity, getting ourselves in a, in a breaking through uh, jaded beliefs or how we view ourselves or a situation or something that's hanging overhead. And then every day we're working to solidify more positive experiences. And then the most important thing I'm going to do with you is whatever you think you're capable of, I'm going to make you double it and I'm going to make you double it again. And then I'm going to make you double it again. And because, because we are so capable of so much, but yet remember that our goals that we write down today can only be a representation of the way that we view ourselves from the past. So if you view yourself as somebody who hasn't accomplished anything, your goals are going to be very low. But once you break through that, then we can create goals, and most of the time they hit them way before. I remember one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. This is a true story. Still my best friend to this day. Uh, very prominent uh, real estate investor and coach that we coached for a while. I worked on some personal development stuff. He said there was a sentence that I said to him that made him a million dollars, like in a negotiation. And I said, okay, what is he paying me? That was 45 minutes of my time. I said a sentence, he negotiated a million dollar deal. What's the ROI on that, right? And I could go on and on and on, right? But that's why having somebody in your corner to give you a different point of view allows you to see things that you can't see yourself. Mm -hmm. 100%. And you've done that. I mean, I, you've done that for me. 
I mean, absolutely. You have allowed me to open up my eyes to see things that I couldn't see. And we've talked before about operating in your greatness. And when somebody is operating in their zone of greatness or their zone of genius or their unique ability, it comes in different names, different titles, but it's that quality that you do that just seems so natural that you don't even think twice. And for everybody, it's different. But when you're operating in that zone, you just think everybody else can do that too. And you don't realize that that's your talent, like that's your, your gift. And one of the things that you have helped me to see is where I operate in my greatness and I don't even realize it's my greatness. And do you find that in your coaching clients, when you coach them and you ask them to set goals for themselves, do you find that they have trouble setting those goals? And then what do you do to overcome that or help through that? 99%, you know, you can't, you can't write proper goals from a place of survival. And 99% of people are in survival mode. So until you break through on the other side, you can't really write true goals. And I'll be honest with you, also another 90% of them are goals for somebody else. And what we typically do is we'll work together for a little bit, we'll clean up some messes, we'll write goals, and then about six weeks, or like three months in, we'll rewrite the goals again. And the goals are so different because they've done some work, they feel more confident, they feel more dialed in consistency wise. And then to be honest with you, the goals will change again, right? A lot of people don't write down goals because they're too worried that they're, that they're stuck with them. And I go, well, then write them in pencil. Who cares? Like, it doesn't matter. It's not, the goal is about who you become in the process. It's not the actual goal by any stretch of the imagination. So if I push you, we'll just use a simple example. Do you know what's really easy to do? And I know people are gonna get so upset with this, because. but I'm talking from personal experience. I've lost 75 pounds myself. Do you know what's really easy to do? Is to lose 60 pounds. You know what's really, really hard to do? To lose the last 10. Ask me, because I've been dealing with it for three years. Look, when you get finer and finer and finer on something, those last five, that's what we talk about in our company every day. You know what my company is great at? The company that I took over and we're running right now, they take it 95% of the way. They're really good at that. It's that last 5% that we leave on the table. And what I tell my clients every day is let's take it all the way. Let's not only take it 100%, let's go 110% and see where we wind up. And let's do that over and over and over again which is gonna build up your confidence. When you have more confidence, you feel better about yourself. When you feel better about yourself, your goals get bigger. Boom, there you go. I agree. <laughs> it's, it's hard to come back from that one. I mean, I'm as you were talking, I'm thinking about my own personal experience. And remember in the beginning, it's like, okay, what are your goals? Now we're, I'm part of a mastermind group where they encourage everybody to write out your yearly goals, write out your three-year goals, write out your five-year goals. And I've always struggled with that because lately I've been telling everybody my life's been changing every 30 seconds. It's like, it's really hard to write a goal. If you go, if I go back to July 31st to where I am today and you ask me, would I be where I am today? Well, no, I mean, I wouldn't have thought that I would have been starting a company called Personal Coach Finder. Like I couldn't well, have envisioned that. Me, so I couldn't you, envision that a couple months ago. <laughs> so, cause I don't want you to be your own salesman. Cause I know I'll do it for you. Okay. Okay. That's when fine. You, when you came to me with this idea, I was like, it's so smart, right? Because because look at it, right? What do companies do to stand out? It's Google, right? It's Yelp, it's it's Facebook ads. It's okay. Well, where's that in the coaching business? It's not there. So how do we get a group of people together that have actually been coached by somebody? Not not lies on Instagram, not lies on. How do we get an actual report of a human that's been coached that life has been changed to vet them ahead of time? The same way you would hire a contractor. Hey, this guy does his job. He blah, blah, blah. And then put that and give a, give a community and a space where people can pick a coach that matches what they need. I, I haven't seen it. That's why I love this website, what you created or, you know, what it becomes because it's so important because if a coach is out there and they're good at what they do, the more people they can impact, the more we change the world. The more we change the world, the happier I'm going to be.
So to have a meeting place for all those things to happen in one spot, it's a no brainer. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, for me, it was just, it is a labor of love. It's born out of my desire to give back to a community that has dramatically changed my life. So, and that's where it came from. And I'm just so grateful to you. And then I've met some phenomenal coaches along the way, and I've had the privilege of interviewing them on my podcast and realizing that, wow, these people are impacting so many other people as well. And it's my joy to give them just another place where they can exist out there in the internet to be able to reach somebody else. And I think the other thing that has really transformed my thinking to anything that I build and or to anybody would build is I've come to realize it's a huge friggin' world out there. There are so many people that are not reached yet. And we can get disillusioned into thinking that life is saturated in all areas. And it's not, you know, I come across people, I wind up being in rooms, places, and they come across, they're like, wow, I never thought of a coach. How do you find a coach? Where's a coach from? How does a coach change your life? Like they didn't like not even considering or had any idea at all. So I think I allow that thought to fuel me and not to give up. I want to do that, this definition for people too. That's super sure. important, right? Because coaching has become more prevalent. I'm all for therapy. I've had therapy. I love therapy. I have no problem with it. The difference between a coach and a therapist is a therapist focuses on your past. A coach, is fo a coach focuses on what's forward. And for me, I'm going to live in the forward movement of who you can become. And when we are confident enough in the forward movement, then we will work on the past, not the other way around. And so for anybody that's gone to therapy and hasn't gotten what they needed, because I talked to them six times a week, maybe try a coach. And I'm not saying try me, I'm saying try anybody and see if you like this tactic a little bit better, which I think you will. Mm -hmm. 100%. I've personally have been through therapy and it never, you're right, it, they just go backwards, but they don't focus on who you can become. They look to change the behavior, but they don't go deeper to look into the person to change the person. And and you mentioned it before, the coaching is very personal. It is not a one size fits all. You have to find that person who matches who you are because, and you mentioned it, you coach a certain way. Well, the way you coach might not resonate with somebody else. It resonates with me because that's what I was looking for, but it might not be for somebody else. And that's why there's so many different methods, so many different people out there. And, and I'm a product of the forward thinking you know, and just to be encouraged in the person who you are at this moment, but then embrace the person that you can become. So final thoughts. I know we've been trying to finish this for a while, but I've just enjoyed the conversation. Well, well, I want <laughs> Is there a this. question I should have asked and didn't? <laughs> no, I was thinking this and I've shared it a couple of times, but I don't know if I've ever had an actual conversation about my coaching. I'm very quiet about it. I'm very humbled. I'm not a sales guy. So it was really good to kind of talk through some of the techniques. I'm excited. I, I am going to put this on my own podcast because I think it's so good. Uh, if you will allow me. Uh, of course. But, but I'm very excited. There's going to be some great clips from here that we can share with people that are, are going to impact people. And I just appreciate the opportunity. Oh, sure. I appreciate your time. I mean, my life has been radically transformed by how you coach, the methods you use, and the fact that you lean into who I am as a person. And a really good coach will meet their client right where they are and allow that client to determine the trajectory that they go in in order to initiate their change. But I really believe that there's also an art involved as well that you as a coach need to also listen to that person and decide, okay, I see the direction they're going in and is that really the direction they need to go in? So there's an, an importance there on what you do because you are transforming somebody's life and their future. So there is a, an importance behind what you do. And I go back to that word severity, you know, it's just you, you are severely impacting somebody's future. All right. 
Austin, thank you for your time. If people want to reach out, I know I'm going to put it in the show notes there. Do you want to mention real briefly how people can find you? <laughs> you just go to austinlenny.com, L-I-N-N-E-Y. You can shoot me a message through there. You can check out the podcast. You can hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, wherever I'm at. Uh, shoot me a message. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. All right. Take care. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Small Steps Big Wins podcast. I value your time with me and I seek to make every moment count. In order to make lasting change in your life, listening is usually not enough. So I want to ask you, what practical steps are you going to put into action today as a result of listening to this podcast? Remember, any step, any action, no matter how small, starts your journey to a big win. And if you're not sure where to get started, check out my website, personalcoachfinder.com and find someone who can help. Remember, life doesn't get better by chance. It gets better by choice. Take small steps today and make your life awesome, friends.